Who gives this woman to be married to this man? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here in the sight of God and before his church to witness the union of this man and this woman in holy matrimony. This is an honorable estate instituted and blessed by God in paradise before humanity's fall into sin. In marriage, we see a picture of the communion between Christ and his bride, the church. Our Lord blessed and honored marriage with his presence and first miracle at Cana in Galilee. This estate is also commended to us by St. Paul as good and honorable. Therefore, marriage is not to be entered into inadvisedly or lightly, but reverently, deliberately, and in accordance with the purposes for which it was instituted by God. The union of husband and wife in heart, body, and mind is intended by God for the mutual companionship, help, and support that each person ought to receive from the other, both in prosperity and adversity. Marriage was also ordained so that man and woman may find delight in one another. Therefore, all persons who marry shall live within their vows and so keep themselves undefiled as members of the body of Christ. God also established marriage for the procreation of children, to be brought up in the fear and instruction of the Lord, so that they may offer him their praise. So has God established this holy estate that Dalton and Libby wish to enter. They desire our prayers as they begin their marriage in the Lord's name and with his blessing. And so we do begin this day with a word of prayer, this prayer written by Libby's grandfather, Henry. Let us pray. O Heavenly Father, bless us, we pray, as Libby and Dalton are made one today. O Lord, see here thy children, with thoughts divine and kneeling at thy altar in marriage to be thine. Two hearts, here seeking thy blessing, thy guidance, care, and grace. They seek thy guiding presence for dark and sunny days with thee as head. O Savior, thy grace will more than glow. No cross, no ills can harm them. No ill winds assail them. O give them, Lord, thy spirit, as they kneel before you, and both, dearest Jesus, their faith and vows do seal. Do bless them in their marriage, these two in thee made one. In steadfastness do keep them until their days are done. And then, O Lord, receive them into your eternal home. O gracious Lord, bless us, we pray. Libby and Dalton made one today. In Jesus' loving name, amen. We now turn to God's word. For God is love, and God is the author of marriage. And this afternoon we begin at the beginning in the perfection of Eden, where God established marriage. Then the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. So out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the heavens and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called every living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all the livestock and to all the birds of the heavens and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found a helper fit for him. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and while he slept took one of the ribs and closed up the place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord had taken from the man he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Then the man said, This at last is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. 
Therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. God is love, and so we look to his word to define love and what true love is. And so we read in 1 Corinthians 13, love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices in the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. And now these three remain, Faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. And then in the third chapter of Colossians, God's Word teaches us how our Lord equips us and clothes us as His people as we interact and as we relate to one another in love and in service. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace, and be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly, as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, Whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. And our final reading for today, the words of our Lord from Matthew chapter 19, where Jesus declares that it is God himself who is joining you, Dalton and Libby, as one today. Jesus says, have you not read? That at the beginning the Creator made them male and female, and said, For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother, and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one. Therefore what God has joined together, let no one separate. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, and especially you, Dalton and Libby, on this, your wedding day. I know these past months have been a flurry of activities for the two of you, not only planning for this special day, but you, Libby, finishing up your classes and graduating from college, and Dalton, you trying to get the barn dominium ready to go, right? With help of Danny and many, many others, Danny, your dad, so that you would have a place to call home, your first home as husband and wife, but also a place for the pigs, so that you would have a place uh, for your elite pig operation as well. And I know it's been a lot of work, right? A lot of decisions have been made, a lot of time has been invested, and you're very close, right? Just a few more finishing touches, And it'll be done, making your house a home. And yet, this probably isn't the best of news, but God, in his word, says that all the building, all the designing, all the planning, all the construction may be futile. Because we read in Psalm 127, unless the Lord builds the house. The laborers who build it labor in vain. No matter how big or small a house may be, 
no matter how simple or extravagant, unless the Lord builds the house. It's all for naught. Unless Jesus Christ is the foundation of your marriage, His love, His forgiveness, well, then your marriage isn't going to be on solid footing, on the solid rock, but instead on sinking sand. For indeed, a home where our Lord's love and forgiveness and His Word is lacking is a place where love and forgiveness between each of you will also be lacking. And yet, this is the good news. Not only that the barn dominium is about done, you have a place to call home, but that the two of you have chosen to have the Lord as the builder of your house, the builder of your lives together, the builder of your marriage, Jesus Christ, is the foundation of that marriage. For months now, the two of you have been coming here together to worship together, to hear God's word together, to receive that comfort, strength, peace, and power of God's word. The two of you have come here together to pray together. The two of you, it's always on this side, right? Kneeling, because we're creatures of habit, we always sit on the same side of the church, kneeling together to receive the body and blood of Christ in the Lord's Supper. Not only to forgive your sins, but also to strengthen your love for God and for one another. Dalton and Libby, we do rejoice with you today because the Lord is the builder of your house. Because Jesus Christ the solid rock is the foundation of your marriage and your life together. And that's great news because you need Jesus. You need the Lord for a strong marriage. Both of you are wonderful people, loving and caring people. But, like all of us, you're sinful. And, you know, you look at that barn dominium, there's really not a lot of space. You're all under the same roof. You know, separating the two of you where you'll be living and where all the pigs and the sows are, right? And really, that's the temptation. is to act like those living in the back of the barn dominion, right? You know, to act like pigs. Dirty greedy, you know, rolling around in the, in the mud and the muck of selfishness and pride and arrogance and resentment. It's what we're tempted to do. And Paul, as we heard in our scripture reading from Colossians, he obviously doesn't use the language of pigs, but he uses the language of clothes. Because again, our own clothes, because of sin, they're dirty, they're smelly, they're, they're stinky. But God gives us the clothes we need for our relationships with one another. And of course, this most important relationship of husband and wife. Yes, God takes our stinky clothes, our smelly, sin-stained clothes of pride and arrogance and selfishness. And again, Scripture says, He clothes us with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, patience, forgiveness. And then the Scripture goes on to say, over all these wonderful clothes that God gives to us as we relate to one another, He gives us love which God's Word says binds everything together in perfect harmony. Yes, sadly, because sin exists in every relationship, there are going to be times when you act more like the pigs out back than what God calls you to be as husband and wife. Times when selfishness is going to reign instead of 
putting the other first. Times when resentment and anger control what is said and done. But that's why you need Jesus. You know, you keep reading in our scripture reading for today after Paul talks about the clothes that God gives us for our relationships with others. He says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. And that's what it means to have the Lord as the builder of your house. To have Christ as the foundation. That in your life together, in your barn dominium, the Word of God is dwelling richly. The peace of Christ is ruling and reigning. That together as husband and wife, you're calling upon the Lord in prayer. Asking Him for the things that you need. Thanking Him for the blessings He so freely gives. And yes, when sin creeps into your marriage, when you're acting more like the pigs in the pigsty than the husband and wife that's supposed to be in the front part of the barn dominium, Jesus is there then too. There to forgive. There to restore that love through the power of His sin forgiven. And His forgiveness is so powerful that it not only brings about reconciliation, but it will strengthen your bond as husband and wife. And so what a blessing to know that all the hours, all the time spent on the barn dominium is not in vain. Yes, you're blessed with a good builder in your family. But you're blessed especially with the master builder. The Lord building your house. The Lord building your marriage together. Jesus Christ as the foundation. And so Dalton and Libby, we do rejoice with you today. As here in a few moments you will vow your love and faithfulness to one another. And be united by God himself as husband and wife. And may the Lord continue to be that unseen guest in your house. As He continues, as He has promised, to bless you, to keep you, to strengthen you, to build the two of you up in love for Him and in love for one another. God grant it for Christ's sake. Amen. And now, Dalton, I ask you, will you have this woman to be your wedded wife, to live together in the holy estate of matrimony as God ordained it? Will you nourish and cherish her as Christ loved his body, the church, giving himself up for her? Will you love, honor, and keep her in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, remain united to her alone, as long as you both shall live? Then say, I will. Libby. Will you have this man to be your wedded husband, to live together in the holy estate of matrimony as God ordained it? Will you submit to him as the church submits to Christ? Will you love, honor, and keep him in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, remain united to him alone, as long as you both shall live? Then say, I will. I will. Two of you may turn and face each other. Dalton, repeat after me. I, Dalton, take you, Libby, to be my wedded wife, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poor, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, till death us do part, according to God's holy will, and I pledge you my faithfulness. And I pledge you my faithfulness. Libby, repeat after me. I, Libby, I, Libby. Take, you, take you, Dalton, to be my wedded husband, to, my wedded husband. to, have, and to, hold, to have and to hold from this day forward, this day forward. For, better, for, worse, for better, for worse, for richer, for poor, richer, for poor. 
in sickness and in health, in sickness and in health. To, love and to, to love and to cherish, till death us do part, according to God's holy will, and I pledge you my faithfulness. Let us pray. Almighty Father, you have generously created all things to serve us for our good. Send your blessing upon this couple who shall wear these rings as a constant reminder of their marital fidelity. Grant that by your mercy they may live gladly and faithfully in this holy estate. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Dalton, take Libby's ring, place it on her finger, and repeat after me. Receive this ring, Receive this ring. As, a pledge and token as a pledge and token of wedded love and faithfulness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Libby, take Dalton's ring, place it on his finger, and repeat after me. Receive this ring, Receive this ring. As, a pledge and token as a pledge and token of wedded love and faithfulness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Two of you may kneel. Now that Dalton and Libby have committed themselves to each other in holy matrimony, have given themselves to each other by their solemn pledges, and have declared the same before God and these witnesses, I now pronounce them to be husband and wife in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. What God has joined together, let no one separate. Amen. And Dalton and Libby, the almighty and gracious God, abundantly grant you his favor and sanctify and bless you with the blessing given to Adam and Eve in paradise, that you may please him in body and soul and live together in holy love until your life's end. Amen. Indeed, we have witnessed a miracle as God has joined Dalton and Libby, the two becoming one. At this time, they will light the unity candle, a visible reminder of this union that God has created. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, our Heavenly Father, 
Grant that by your blessing, Dalton and Libby may live together according to your word and promise. Strengthen them in faithfulness and love toward each other. Sustain and defend them in all trial and temptation. Help them to live in faith toward you, in the fellowship of your holy church, and in loving service to each other, that they may enjoy your heavenly blessing. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We pray together the prayer our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. At this time, I invite you to turn to the back side of your bulletin as we sing together the hymn, Go My Children, with my blessing. Now, Dalton and Libby, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. You may turn and face the congregation. It is my pleasure and joy to present to you Mr. and Mrs. Dalton and Libby Workman. <laughs> 